Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm gonna compare the Gamera set from Aerial Video to the Criterion Godzilla set. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Before I start this comparison, I first wanna state that I actually did not grow up with Gamera at all. Like, the first time I found Gamera was actually Mystery Science Theater, and of course, it was like the early movies back in those days. And naturally, of course, I thought the earlier movies were funny. And of course, I thought the turtle was pretty cool. And of course, after I saw the movies from like the past, I saw the 90s trilogy. And oh my god, guys, like the 90s trilogy, to me at least, is like the best trilogy of movies out there. And so, I was actually introduced to Godzilla, Power Rangers, Ultraman, and Johnny Sokol way before Gamera. However, just because I have a personal bias for the Godzilla franchise does not mean it will cloud my judgment for the comparison for this video. So, we're gonna compare the extras, the packaging, and so on and so forth to give you guys an idea about how the two sets actually compare. <laughs> The biggest difference between the two sets is obviously the packaging. Now, the Godzilla set, of course, has an entire book for a packaging. It goes into like a lot of details about the history of the movies, it gets synopsis, and of course, it has the disc at the back of the book. For the case of the Gamera set, it has way more content in terms of the packaging. There's at least three different books. Now, the first book has all the movies into one big packaging. The second book has a comic book collection that has like a lot of different comics from different artists like Matt Frank. And the third book is a collection of historical facts, a synopsis of the movie, as well as some x-rays of the monsters. And so, in terms of packaging alone, the decisions for both sets are completely different. It's only a matter of personal preference. In terms of the audio options, the Gamera set has way more options, like, it is not even funny about the amount of options you have for every single last film. Now, for the case of Japanese and English audio tracks, like every single movie in the set for Gamera has a Japanese and English audio tracks. Like, for the original movies, of course, you get like the Japanese as well as the AIP dubs of these movies and the infamously bad Sandy Frank dubs. Now for the 90s trilogy, you get the Japanese, you get the English audio track from ADV, and you also get a British audio track with a replacement score. The second movie, of course, has the Japanese audio track. It has, of course, the English audio track from ADV, and it also has some sort of strange redneck dub. I am not even joking. Like prior to this set, I had no idea that a redneck dub of Gamma 2 actually existed. So let's take a listen to the redneck dub because guys, it is just so hilarious. Hanami here. Hey, it's me. Listen carefully. First impact was off the of Senriku. And it looks like the next is heading to where you are, boy. That sucks. It's estimated to land somewhere just out of sight. <laughs> you know, Sapporo. Nothing's hit land yet, and we don't know exactly how large they may be. Finally, for Gamera Street, you have, of course, the Japanese audio track. You have two English audio options. You get the English dub, and you get some sort of dub audio commentary of Gamera. <laughs> I am not even joking. There's like an audio commentary with just Gamera just talking. Hello out there. My name is Kyle Jones, and we'll, we have a special treat for you today. Um, we have Cameron Beecham III, who is, of course, the actor who has played Gamera for some 
37 years now, and uh, quite an impressive career. And um, this is, I believe, his first interview ever. Indeed it is, yes, I thank you for that. And uh, also with us is Iris Vanderwall. This is her first picture. She has been seeking a roles for a long time in the industry, and um, well, this is the one, first one she's landed. And of course, Gamma the Brave has Japanese and the English dub that was done by Media Blasters. And of course, every single last film that's included in the set has its own audio commentary. Now, what does the Godzilla set actually have? Well, this baby right here does not include audio commentary for every single last film. And matter of fact, the only audio commentary that is included for the set is for the first movie. Now, the first movie, of course, is Gujira. And, of course, the American cut that was like uh, the King of the Monsters. Those are the only two movies in the entire set that actually feature audio commentary. Now, of course, the English dubs, like not every single English dub was included in the Godzilla set. Now, the first one, of course, has King of the Monsters. The second movie was missing like the uh, Gargantus dub that was done for that movie. Now, here's some more lists of you guys to give an idea of what else is missing. Of course, there is like the international dub for like the Invasion of the Astro Monster, Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters, uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, and the Terror Mechagodzilla. There was also the American cut for like uh, King Kong versus Godzilla, but the rest of the dubs, of course, they were just missing. Now, I'm not sure if it's like rice complications or not, but not every single dub for the Godzilla movies are in fact included with the set. <laughs> In terms of the extras, I feel as though that the Godzilla set has significantly less extras in comparison to the Gamera set. Now, the extras that were included for the Godzilla set, it included stuff like interviews of the filmmakers, it had of course like um, audio commentaries for the first two movies, it had like a lot of programs about the special effects and how they actually made the special effects. And of course, this whole entire big booklet that I just showed you guys earlier in the video. Now, for the Gamera set, of course, it has like extras every single disc, just going into like a lot of detail. Like I said before, there's audio commentaries for every single last film. There's an image gallery for every single last film. There's English dubs for every single last film. There's interviews and kaiju historians for every single last film. So, in terms of rewatchability and the extras factor, I feel as though that the Gamera set is actually full of extras way more in comparison to the Godzilla set. Look guys, I love both sets for various different reasons. Now, honestly as a monster, I personally prefer Godzilla, however, Gamera is not too shabby either. However, I feel as though, in terms of the extras and everything else, it feel as though that the Gamera set actually has more work behind it in comparison to the Godzilla set. Now, I think the main reason why there's less stuff for the Godzilla set is because, of course, of rice issues. However, both sets are really awesome and definitely check out both sets. But what do you guys think? 
tell me in the comments section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.